Today I want to uh, talk about the Lord's Prayer. Uh, how many here know the Lord's Prayer? I think everybody raised their hand. And uh, you know, like when we're taught the Lord's Prayer when we're children, uh, we really are probably almost asked and forced a little bit to memorize it. You know, you kind of, how much you learned this week, you know, and you come back. And so you're just working on memorizing these words. And so a lot of times we're missing the whole essence or the energy of the prayer, you know. We're so busy just speaking out and putting, projecting our energy out that we miss what is there for us to receive. So the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer, uh, Jesus gave us this prayer. Jesus was the Lord. Jesus is Lord. So Jesus gave us this prayer, and Jesus brought us the bread of life. And through this prayer, showed us how we can access this bread of life through our daily living. I think the Lord's Prayer is a, a positive affirmation and revelation of the presence of God. The presence of God in all of life and the presence of God within us all. And as we begin to walk in that essence, to move beyond the words, to move beyond the ladder of the guidance that was given to us, we can begin to embody from our heart, expressing the word, the word made manifest. Jesus, uh, in chapter 94 of the Aquarian Gospel, uh, he shares with the um, disciples this prayer and then uh, goes into the Beatitudes Sermon on the Mount which Cindy has been giving us so excellently these last couple weeks so the this is he's kind of preparing them for that because the Sermon on the Mount are guidelines for our ways of living and so if we can get hooked up with God our Heavenly Father we'll see, feel, hear, and follow the guidelines in our life. So, this is what Jesus says. Prayer is the deep communion of the soul with God. And we're here on a soul journey, aren't we? We're here on a soul journey. So he speaks this to them right off the bat. So when you pray... Do not deceive yourselves as do the hypocrites who love to stand upon the streets and in the synagogues and pour out many words to please the ears of man. And they adorn themselves with pious airs that they may have the praise of men. They seek the praise of men and their reward is sure. So I think that's really neat. Uh, when we seek the praise of men, we're going to get the praise of men. But if we're going to take the time and energy to connect with our Father God, we can get the guidance, we can get the praise of God in our life. But when you pray, go to the closet of your soul, close all the doors, and in the holy silence pray. Go to the closet of your soul. So we're going to move beyond our physical world into that place where we can be a little bit more receptive. Close all the doors and in the holy silence pray. You need not speak a multitude of words nor repeat the words again and again as the heathen do. Just say, Our Father God, who art in heaven, holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our needed bread. Help us forget the debts that other people owe to us, that all our debts may be discharged. And shield us from the tempter's snares that they are too great for us to bear. And when they come, give us the strength to overcome. A simple prayer. A positive directive, a positive affirmation, how we can connect with God and begin to ask begin to ask God our Father what would be the right perfect expression, word, manifestation for our journey as a soul on planet earth. Our Father who art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, 
It's the Father within who speaketh the words. It's the Father within who doeth the works. He spoke that often when he did a demonstration or when he was teaching or giving counsel or guidance. It's not I, but it's the Father within who doeth the works. Our Father who is in heaven, within, the Father within. You know, this is the Lord's Prayer. We say this is Jesus' prayer. Do you think Jesus used this prayer? Did he go away? Did he go to the mountaintop? Did he go away from the people to get out on the water? So he could close the door of the worldly way and then to hear the guidance. These things I do, you should be also. Holy is thy name. There is only one truth, God the good. And I honor this. To begin to honor the spiritual guidance that you get. And like Cindy said, as she teaches the students uh, psychic development to increase their sensitivity and their ability to perceive energy within energy as information. And she teaches them prayers and how to connect with God and to go within their heart. And then trust what you get. Trust God. You've connected with God. You've asked God for guidance. You've asked guidance for the highest blessing or healing for your client. So begin to trust that. Honor that. Honor that you have the ability to hear God and to receive and then to express that guidance in any way you want. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. To begin to allow... See, the, the, the kingdom of God, the counsel of God, all that's perfect, all that's harmonious and good, that will be done in the flesh and on earth. To do this in our bodies, through our bodies. To come to planet earth, to begin to be more than we think we are. To be more than the world says we are. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy heavenly state of consciousness come. As thy will is done in a state of happiness, which is in heaven, that heavenly state of consciousness. The will of God for all on earth is that they may attain perfection and expansion of the little self into the Christ self. So to begin to understand or recognize that we are on a soul journey, this journey of growth, expansion, evolution in consciousness. Evolution in consciousness. To begin to learn how to function at a higher level of awareness. We choose to express how we choose. And we can express at a lower level of consciousness or we could express at a higher level of consciousness. We could express that human consciousness, or we can express in divine consciousness. And this is the Lord's Prayer. This is the prayer that Jesus gave us to show us how to pray, allowing us to access the energy of God, which is within us, which is within us all. For us to choose to access that is which within us. As I harmonize my will with God's will, I experience heaven in my world. See? I seek to harmonize my will with thy will, Father. So we're asking to be lifted now. We're asking to be lifted out of our little self into our spiritual nature. And then when we're lifted, we see a little clearer. We feel a little deeper. We understand a little more. And we allow compassion to begin to flow a little more easy in our life. Thy will be done on earth through the physical, beyond the book, in our life. The soul journey. Jesus is showing us the simple way to get the guidance and begin to transcend the pointed objects in our world. Give us this day our daily bread. 
give us this day our daily bread. Back in the day, so when Jesus is talking to them, <clears throat> there weren't many grocery stores or markets around. Bread was the staple of life. And so they planted the seed and they harvested the crop and they made their bread every day. They made it every single day. It was fresh. Give us this day our daily bread. What he was sharing when he's connecting them with God. <clears throat> if we can understand that God is going to give us the daily bread we need daily. What, what do I need today? If we ask God, show me what I need to do today, what I need to say. Where do you want me today? Trust what we get. Did you see? He didn't say, <clears throat> oh, give us this day our daily bread, God, because we want to make sure we've got some for tomorrow. Fill our storehouses. You see, if you begin to have a relationship with God where God is source and flowing to your life all the time, every day you're going to get what you need. Every day you're going to get what you need. So, so could that alleviate uh, stress and worry? So we begin to let go. We begin to lighten up a little bit, just in the basics of life. How many here know God is source in all things? Everybody raises their hand. Thank you, God. See, God's a source in our world. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have to maybe solve some problems that pop up in our world. But you know what? We don't have to solve them ourselves. Father, we can get the guidance. And God's in every one. And we'll be connected with the person that God's going to flow through to help us solve a challenge or a problem or give us an insight in life. And it, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing when we can open up to not only give our gift, but allow ourselves to receive the gift of spirit through our brothers and sisters on planet Earth. And the bread we need is that Fuji no not. Give us the, this day our daily bread, Father, that would feed our spiritual nature, that would feed our Christ body. You see? Because if our Christ is radiant, strong, nothing could touch us. You see? We allow that Christ in nature to grow strong and manifest through our life, through our word, through our thoughts, through our actions. Our thoughts, our prayers, that's got to be one of my and Cindy's favorite songs. And we battle it out for using it in our service. <laughs> <laughs> I need that song. But our thoughts, our prayers, we create thought in this dimension, don't we? We create with thought in this dimension, right? And then uh, our words, and our words are just a manifestation of our thoughts. And they're powerful because they're, they're making it more tangible. Words are powerful. And then our words usually will lead into acts. Our acts are prayers. And now to take the God guidance. God guide my thoughts. God guide my words. God guide my actions. To be God's love. To live in the kingdom of heaven on planet earth. And uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see? you see? Forgiveness, Jesus, that was one of his main teachings, forgiveness. Because when we can forgive, we free ourselves. We free another. And the judgments that we make and live and die with are ours. You're not God's. So when we can learn to get out of our little self and begin to look at the God within that brother, that sister, that we might be having a challenge with, and then let it go. And that's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Because we're so identified with our emotions, our personality, our ego. You see, in Jesus taking us to God, God our Father taking our spiritual reality, we are the sons and daughters of God. So to, once we begin to let go, forgive and let go, it, it really is a, a 
transmutation of karma. You see? Transmutation of karma. Because we're creating our own karma. See, God, God doesn't give us karma. We're creating it and we accept it. Oh, that sounds cool. I better serve a little penance for this choice I made, you see? So, as we can begin to let go, that allows for transmutation of karma, the other as well as self. We free the other as well as self. And it's so important because uh, karma keeps us tied to this third dimensional density and experience. You see? You've heard the wheel of karma, round and round. Here we go again. So as we look at, we're on this soul journey to learn What's keeping me on this karmic wheel? What can I let go of? How can I free myself? How can I free my big self? How can I free my Christed nature, you see? A little self likes it. Ooh. Silly, but it's been a long time. So allowing for the transmutation of karma in your life and in the lives of others. And then let's just go to planetary karma also. We have to let go of the old planetary karma for us to create the new world, the new age. Can't bring the baggage. Forgiveness. People, places, things, events. Letting it go. Shield us from the tempter's snare. As we choose God's world, I choose to live in your world, Father. I choose to live in that world of happiness and harmony and goodness. If we create with our thoughts and words and actions, that's the first step. Where do you choose to live? We can all sit on that proverbial nail as long as we want. But when we finally go, I'm done, we can get up and move. To begin to understand, we create a lot of these situations. How's this? We create all the situations in our life experience. And so we can recreate. When we align with God and ask to be lifted, because we created at this level of consciousness, and when we lift into God consciousness, now we can lift up and begin to create at a higher level of consciousness. So we can have different experiences. See, Jesus came to teach mankind. Jesus didn't come to die for our sins. Jesus came to reveal the love of God and the love of God that's within all of our hearts. And see, love, see, love is what saves us because we quit doing less than loving things. We quit having less than loving thoughts, speaking less than loving words, acting less than lovingly. And so love saves us from ourself. Love saves us from ourself. When we seek to be led by the ways of love and light, we will not be overwhelmed by the sorrows and challenges of our material world. You see? But there's a saying, don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. In the big picture. You see? So we can let go. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. And don't we love that? That's in some prayers and not in others. So, okay. But when we can lift in that consciousness of God, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, that's all in this. And that's where I like, say, um, the omnipotence of God, the power, powerful God, the omniscience, the all-knowing God, the omnipresent, ever-present. God is ever-present. When we learn to live in the light, we will live in the consciousness even though we're using a physical body. You see? 
We can live in a Christed consciousness in a physical body. And there have been people on the planet that have done that. There are people on the planet now that are allowing that Christed energy to flow through them. And we have to give ourselves permission to go there. But this is how we get there. By following the steps. By following the steps. The simple prayer that Jesus the Christ gave us. Remember, God's our Father. God is our Father. We're the children of God. We're heir to the kingdom. God is within. God's within us all. Connect with God consciously. Connect with God daily. You know, prayer, true prayer, takes practice. I don't know if we're really taught to pray that often. Or how to pray aright. And that's what Jesus is trying to teach him how to pray. Because they're seeing guys stand on the corner of the road with ash on their face and making hosannas and stuff to the crowd. Oh, they're a holy, pious person. And they get their answer their prayer from people. Oh, you're cool. But they're not connecting with God. So we have to learn to connect with God. And that's what this prayer is teaching us to do, how we can connect with God. And to pray daily. Pray when you get up in the morning. Ask for guidance what you got to do. Pray before you go to bed. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Another day. He's asking us to change. Jesus is asking us to change. And then showing us how we can change. And he just didn't tell us. You see, he'd already walked and demonstrated all these little steps. So he demonstrated them in the physical body. Demonstrated them in the physical body and on planet Earth. Heaven on Earth. A heavenly state of consciousness on planet Earth. And that's what he's revealing that that's our path. That's our soul journey. To even begin to transcend our soul, you see, which houses all our experiences, to let those go. Then to ascend into that spiritual awareness, I am. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. You see? So a lot of times we get conformed to the worldly way to raise consciousness. What's right, what's wrong, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. <laughs> be ye not conformed. You see? Allow yourself to be transformed by spirit, by God. Put off your old nature, which belongs to your former manner of life, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new nature, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. See? So we put off our old nature. How many people are different than they were five years ago? Have you put off that old nature? So you put off that old nature, and now we put on a new nature. This is who I am now. This is who I am now. And we walk. And we, and we do this. This is what we really get to experience. The multiple lifetimes is round. Because we are constantly putting off our old nature and embracing a new and higher nature as we continue our journey. To remember God's our Father, to connect with God daily. To begin to, to think from this consciousness, to act from this consciousness, speak from this consciousness. Life is ruled by spiritual law. And we can only bring through what we are willing to believe. So believing that you are spirit, that you are son of God, daughter of God, is the first step. If you don't believe it, your old beliefs, your old manner, your old nature is still controlling you. 
So we change now, and we entertain, we open to a higher belief about who we are. To be that and live it. To believe to the best of our ability. And each day, we just continue to take steps. And when we connect with God, we literally not only take steps, but we take steps ascending into the truth, the love, the light I am. Great prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Let's close our eyes and go with him. So we close the door to the worldly way once again. And just breathe in and, and just allow that holy breath to, to take you deep within your heart. So breathe in and just set that intention to go within your heart, the garden of your heart. And just find yourself in a beautiful garden. It's your garden, the garden of your heart. And in your garden, Jesus the Christ is waiting for you. And I want you to stand with the Christ now. To look into the eyes of the Christ, open your heart and connect your heart with the heart of the Christ now. And just allow for that communion in God's love. And as you breathe, just be aware of your body beginning to grow brighter, more luminous. As you're lifted up into that vibration of the Christ, with Jesus the Christ. And from this high consciousness of love and truth, Our Father, who is within all, we honor your Creator, wisdom, love. We give thanks that you are source in all things. And we now let go. We now let go of all that limits us in our Christ of expression. And we choose to walk in your light, Father, as your love. Knowing that it's the way. So just breathe and, and feel the energy of God's love just filling you even fuller. And from this space of God's love, our Heavenly Father. Send some love, if you choose, to your earthly Father. Send them love, unconditional. Send them love, accepting. Send them love, forgiving. Sending love knowing that they are God's beloved child. <laughs> Following guidance the best that they could. So send them that love, God's love. Wherever they may be. On the planet or in the ethers. No prayer goes unanswered. And they will feel your love this day. And we free them in their next step in Christ's evolution. So just breathe and, and feel your energy. Feel your vibration. This is your new nature this day. Transformed in Christ's love and light, I am. 
So just breathe and feel. And breathe and know how loved you are. And just gently open your eyes. I think one thing about Jesus the Christ, the religion of Jesus the Christ is growing, the growing consciousness, the religion is the growing consciousness of God in our own being. Religion is the growing consciousness of God in our being. To allow that God consciousness to grow and as it grows, it's going to manifest, and we are going to be. Yeah, God. Yeah, God.